Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Godot 4 is here. So we do what we do best in Godot land and we wait for Godot 4.1, 4.2, 4.3 and beyond. And we've got some news about those specifically. So we've got two and a half pieces of news today and I'm going to cover all of them. First off, we have an announcement on the Godot blog about their upcoming released cycle. So there were a couple things they learned shipping Godot 4. So we're going to jump in and take a look at that. So there were two major problems. Contributors were crunching shortly before planned releases to add big features to those releases as they expect the next release would be a long ways away. So if you think that Godot 4.1 is going to be a year down the road, you just try and jam as much crap into Godot 4 as you can. And the key word is crap. This now or never approach leads to probably project releases that probably weren't ready to go and bugs, etc. Also, uh, the feature freeze program. So feature freeze is basically when say, okay, we are done. No new features are coming in here. We are just going to work on bugs from this point on. I uh, ended up being quite long and um, often had a few big features crammed in quickly towards the end. We continue to merge risk changes during our feature free. So basically the lack of uh, future for when the next release is going to be and the fact that they jammed so much crap in made just freezing the features to get the bugs worked out painful and it also just allowed too much to get in there that probably shouldn't have. So they're going to try and solve both these with a new approach to release management. So what is the future plan? Uh, for feature merging phase to be approximately three months. So for 4.1, and this would mean it will cover March, April, and May of 2023. During the feature merging phase, we will gladly merge all pull requests that are ready to be merged and are approved by the relevant teams. This includes new features, bug fixes, and riskier bug fixes that we wouldn't merge during the bug fixing phase. Goal is to reduce the, uh, the pressure to get the big changes merged because this means the next release is going to start uh, in uh, May, April, so April, May, so June. So July would be the beginning of the 4.2 development cycle. So I kind of get a little bit of a spoiler there. So we've got three months of development. So you've got that one other month. Well, what is that one month? That is where the feature freeze part kicks in. So instead of the six month feature freeze of Godot, what you have is three months of features being added, one month of those being polished. So you got uh, every three months, you're going to have new features, new bug fixes, etc. in. And then after those three months, it freezes and it's a focus completely on polishing that release. So then hopefully 4.1 will be ready to go. And then we can start doing the 4.2. Also, in terms of the releasing schedule, I plan on releasing uh, regular dev snapshot builds during the feature merging phases to assist users in testing and contributors in bisecting regressions. I encourage users to test out these dev snapshots. So this is going to be during the first three months phase. You're going to get Get like the alphas, uh, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and so on. And then I'm assuming that they're going to use uh, maybe beta as they get further along and then release candidate when you're in the feature phrase part of things. So the bug fixing phase, so that is that one month at the end. Uh, plan is for it to be approximately one month. So for 4.1, we plan for the bug fixing phase to cover the month of June, where the anticipation of 4.1 would be released at the end of June or say the beginning of July, just for easy math. So you got April, uh, so March, April, May, uh, for development, June for polishing, and then beginning of July for shipping. So uh, three months dev, one month polish for release. And then the next release starts. So you don't have to cram as much in. You're going to get more and more updates. This is very similar uh, to the approach that Blender uses. They used to use almost this exact same schedule, uh, but they shipped it. They skipped it down to just doing two annual releases, whereas Godot will then have three annual releases if this actually works out. Um, so Godot 4.2 should be by the end of June. Uh, the development will start. So Godot 4.1 should be released by the end of June. Uh, and then so you'll be looking at October for the release of uh, 4.2. So let's see if the math holds out. So June, July development will start. July, April, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> July, August, September, right? And then you'll have your one month of polishing, which would be October. And ta-da, you have an October release. That would put then 4.3 would be four months after that. So somewhere around um, February or March of the next year. Uh, I, I like the idea. Uh, we also have some details on long-term support versions. These are like, you basically pick a release uh, in the schedule and that is the one that you continue to do bug fixes on for quite a while. Um, so what they're talking about with the 4.x is with 4.1, they will continue to do bug fixes for 4.0. For 4.2, they will continue to do bug fixes for 4.1. And at that point, they're going to have to try and decide which version becomes the LTS version. So once 4.2 ships, it's possible that 4.0 bug fixes may stop uh, is the approach they are taking. Go 3.6. I'll get back to that in a second. That is my 
and a half article. The other thing that we got, this was a couple days before, uh, they did an article about the rendering priority. So this is the graphics team on the Godot 4.1 and what they are working on. So the kind of features for 4.1 that they want to set as priorities. Again, this is just the rendering team. So nothing about input or networking or anything like that. Uh, and their focuses for the 4.1 release are performance. We always like to hear that. So uh, there are some improvements, uh, issues that they see that they could get out of uh, or some bottleneck rendering bottlenecks they can get out of it. So uh, easy profiling indicates that we have a bottleneck in the vertex shader, uh, which is likely memory bound. Typical solutions to a memory bound vertex shader include reducing VGPR usage to improve occupancy, reducing the amount of data assessed by the vertex shader, etc. So basically they're gonna try and figure out what's slowing down the renderer and fix those. I gotta imagine that's gonna be kind of a priority always. Um, another thing that they're looking at is uh, time slicing directional 3D shadows. So directional 3D shadows are done on a camera uh, dependent basis. And that means so basically every frame, there's some computation being done by time slicing. You're basically saying, okay, we're going to do this little bit one on this frame and then this calculation on the next frame split it up and it shouldn't hurt quality that much but it should speed up the speed of directional 3d lights at least that is the theory another area that we get into and this one honestly has me a little bit confused because i thought that the mega shader was sent to solve this uh but vulcan pipeline compilation stall so when godot loads a new shader and needs to compile all the related pipelines this makes loading times longer th than they need to be and can lead to uh, frame time hiccups where shaders are dynamically loaded at runtime so Godot 4.1, we want to employ more pipeline compilation to a background thread so it can be done async from the rest of the regular rendering and can avoid these hiccups at runtime. So again, I thought mega shaders were supposed to kind of deal with this part, uh, but I might just be a little bit confused in that regard. And then we got some a little bit more general purpose stuff, bugs, fixing of bugs. That one's nice, although no one is assigned to this, uh, but, you know, because everybody is basically assigned to bug fixing. Uh, and uh, proper multi-threading in rendering device. So the render device is not properly thread safe, although the usage of it is so in some places it's overly restrictive and they want to start getting rid of some of those restrictive so the work is necessary to ensure that users don't run into threading bugs as they make more advanced use of the rendering device api it is also necessary to implement background pipeline compilations as described above and then one other big area here and uh, one thing that that didn't make it into godot 4 that was going to is the old way of doing godot uh, was using OpenGL. we've moved on to a vulcan renderer but the gl is still there especially for lower end devices mobile devices etc and in some cases um, Vulcan drivers just suck. So having a GL fallback is nice. Well, with Godot 4, uh, those, that render didn't actually make it in. So uh, we had time to finish the 2D renderer, but did not have time to finish the 3D renderer. So for 4.1, they want to get that 3D render going as well. So for 3D games, you'll be able to pick between uh, Godot and OpenGL. Yes, so if you're running on older devices, etc. And then uh, two other things are uh, FSR uh, 2.2. That is the... Um, the down sampling algorithm from AMD uh, makes a huge performance difference as well. Right now, it supports FSR 1 and 2, I think. It definitely 1 is supported. So they're looking at um, getting FSR 2.0 two in there to replace uh, the temporal anti-aliasing solution that is currently in place. Um, and yeah, so at the same time, we'll be integrating many of our effects. So the um, screen space ambient occlusion, SSR, uh, the... Um, shadows and so on with temporal anti-aliasing so the quality automatically improves when TAA is enabled. Uh, this will not impact the quality of these effects when it is disabled, by the way. So that is another thing that they are working on right now. And yeah, that is the extent of what the rendering people are working on or focusing on in the you know 4.1, maybe kind of leading into the 4.2 era here. Uh, pretty straightforward, uh, pretty understandable on the whole. And then finally, we have the half news. And that is about a week back, uh, the first release of Godot 3.6 Beta 1 is out there. Uh, so Godot 3.x is still being supported. There's not a lot to really report in this one. That's why I didn't cover it in its own video at the time. But if you want to stay on the Godot 3.x branch, they are continuing to provide um, functionality and supports there. So it's going to slow down for sure because most people are on the 4.x branch at this point. But you're getting little improvements, bug fixes, and some backporting of 4.x features into uh, the 3.x branch. So Godot 3.6, I do think Godot 3.6 is meant to be the last of the 3x releases 
uh, but they are still doing updates. So Grow 3.6 is in development. You can see some of the things that have been added in. Again, a lot of it is features, but some of these are backporting of um, existing functionality as well from the Godot 4.x. So things that you could make work in 3.x with minimal impact or development time are being backported from the Godot 4 code base, which is nice. So if you're still in Godot 3 land and you don't want to make just as much of a drastic upgrade, uh, the 3.x update is continuing to get some love and support and so on. So that beta is out now. I don't know if the 3.x beta is going to follow the new announced uh, release schedule that they're talking about right here. I don't think it will be um but going forward it is interesting to see that basically what we're going to get three months development one month stabilizing ship three months development one month stabilizing ship and i like it uh i do think that they'll probably end up going the blender route and turning it into a half year half year and that's getting pretty consistent to be honest right now we have in the unity land you have uh two uh two releases per year and then an lts release between those two uh and that's getting to be the norm and we're starting to see that unreal engine is generally getting to about 2.x releases a year as well so i think three might be a little ambitious but it is nice to see that they're trying to get more focused so they don't try to cram as much into each release because of a fear of missing out so i think it is a good development but i'm curious what do you think comments down below let me know what you're thinking all right that's it goodbye